the function will not have a derivative at a certain point here where the slopes of the secant line fail to approach a limit, meaning the left-hand limit and the right-hand limits are not equal or one of them doesn't isn't defined. We already looked at this function here. If you have if you have that function, the slope from one side is negative one, the slope from the other side is positive one. You could draw a quick sketch for yourself. At that point there, the derivative doesn't exist. I want you to put an explanation here of what of showing what's going on here, as in just by looking at the just by looking at the graph of each of these, try and decide what the what the left and the right hand derivative are. We already said here that the maybe we'll call it the left hand derivative is negative one and the right hand derivative is is one. For these other graphs, I want you to other functions, I want you to graph them and try and just by looking at the picture, what does it appear the what does it appear those derivatives are? Now it's it says here, right? You've got to think about from one side is positive infinity, from the other side is negative infinity. Look at the graph and think about which is which. And while you're at it, make sure you understand what why this is called a cusp. And this is called a corner, what the difference is. And then you have this vertical tangent. And then this one you can draw just with your using your brain, not necessarily the calculator. Draw a graph of each one of those to illustrate what's going on. I will pause this. Okay, this is x to the two thirds. This is the second one there. From that side, it's positive infinity. It's not going to show it over here because of the way this is, but the slope would be coming negative infinity from that side. Since they're since they're different, from one side it's approaching one side it's approaching positive infinity, the other side it's approaching <laughs> negative infinity, even though you can't see it on the picture. Where where would that little dot be going? That dot is showing where the derivative's going. It's going up to infinity as you get closer there. On the other side, where would the dot be? Negative infinity, negative infinity right? As you come from the as you come from the right here, this derivative is approaching positive positive infinity, right? You see the dots going up to infinity there. As you come from this side, whoops, it doesn't like it the way I've set this up. Again, I just set it up by geometrically, not algebraically. Like I set it up by saying draw the tangent through this point and blah blah blah. That's why it's not doing this. But if if you had the this thing on the other side here. This would also be approaching positive infinity. Now, just because they're the they're the same on both sides, the line disappears when you're actually vertical. You you can't have a, a this like an un, a, a vertical line has an undefined slope. The derivative's undefined there, even though the two sides match. Okay, so that's important to know there. And then this, if you have a function that's obviously got a break in it, if you have negative um, something up to there. And then it suddenly changes to positive. What would the derivative from one side be? What would the derivative from the right side be? The slope between there and there? Zero. As I push this point closer, this is going to be the slope still zero. What about if I come from the other side here? Are you sure? <laughs> Well, yeah, this might not work, but we'll try it here. I know we have this sophisticated technology, but in the interest of time, if I if I stretch that out right as that point gets closer, even though the point's not moving, right? What's uh, the point should be moving with it? What's happening with the slope of that line as I get closer? Do we want to try this again and actually have the point moving? It's going towards infinity, right? If we We'll try it this way. Um, 
I gotta make the point connected like that. Okay. Try again here. As this, it's gonna work. Look at that. Whoa. Except the point's getting flattened. <laughs> okay. Um, now I can't get it to squish completely onto there, but the slope's getting higher and higher towards infinity, right? From the left side, the 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 left hand derivative's infinity. Is it supposed to be curved? What? Uh, not if I was doing it properly. Every time you don't use a ruler, I'm going to nail you on that too, you know. <laughs> You're right. I should be I should be modeling things better than that, but. I'm thinking we're okay with this concept of left and right hand derivatives. Something is not dif differentiable. When you say it's not differentiable, this just means where the derivative doesn't exist, right? Where the derivative is undefined. Um, this, I don't even know why I, uh, we, I mean, we've done this already. We don't even need to do this question. It's just that, I mean, if you remember your transformations from grade 12, if you have done grade 12 math already and not doing it concurrently, uh, that's just an absolute value that's shifted. If you do want to know how to graph that, you shift the absolute value function up there. But we've looked at absolute value functions already today, so, and seen why they're not differentiable. What I do want you to do is this in the time that you have left here. I want you to take your calculator and put those two functions in one at a time. First of all, put this one in and zoom in on the... It's under math. Absolute value is under math. Absolute value is right here. Math over to num for number functions. Absolute value... The first one. So you know, I want you to zoom in on the on the origin, on what looks like the vertex of the thing. How much? Actually, it's not the vertex is not at the origin here. It shifted up one. Zoom in on the point zero one. Uh, let me show you maybe how to do this then. I'll put a different function in here. Let's say I was to graph x plus 1. This is some different function here. I'm going to start with zoom decimal. This is good enough. You can use this zoom. Oops. Use the zoom. If you do zoom in, it asks you for a point that you want to zoom in on. See, there's a little tiny flashing cursor right in there, one pixel's flashing in the middle. You can move it up to, I'm going to move it up to that. I want you to zoom in on the point zero one. So move the cursor there and then hit enter and it's going to zoom in on that point. And actually the cursor's still flashing. You can just hit enter repeatedly and it'll zoom in on that point. That's what I would like you to do for those two functions and see what's going on. One of those functions is differentiable at zero and one of them is not. Okay, that's what we're looking at here. One of them's differentiable, one of them's not. Graph both of those functions and you'll find you'll find out which one. Remember, if this if the left hand derivative and right hand derivative don't match, then it's not differentiable. If you if you zoom in on that absolute value function, it's just, it's a sharp corner no matter how much you zoom in on it. Eventually the calculator has trouble dealing with it, but uh, you zoom in, it's a sharp corner, right? But the other one is this weird function that looks like the absolute value function when you look at it under the scale you start with. If you keep zooming in on that, it's going to, this is this function now, if you zoom in on this one separately, yeah, you could probably see the difference. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, if you keep zooming in on this. Yeah, 
<laughs> you zoom in enough on this one and it's rounded at the bottom, just barely. The one function is actually just a straight line. What? What's a straight line? Yeah, it's... Well, that's, that's a lead into what we're going to do uh, next time.